Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today is Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. And in today's video, we're going to be doing an election prediction with Donald Trump and Joe Biden for the 2020 presidential race happening this November on the 3rd. We're officially 34 days away uh, till the presidential election as the very first presidential debate is officially wrapped up live in Cleveland last night. Oh, if you guys did not see last night's debate, I bet you're kicking yourselves today. Um, watching highlights and doing what you can to try to get, uh, you know, the full story out of last night. And it was definitely one for the record books for sure. Uh, again, I did a video last night about the debate. I'll make sure that I link that down in the description below so that way you guys get a chance to, uh, you know, definitely see the reaction to that last night. Um, very impressive, I'll just say that, between the two of them. Um, and then, you know, tonight, Trump speaking live in Duluth, Minnesota. This is the official first rally since the debates have taken place. And I'll say this, it's the it's first for either of the two candidates. Joe Biden has not spoke yet. Uh, so definitely a lot to think about here as we are moving through 34 days till the presidential election. And honestly, I think it's very interesting. You know, last night, Trump said, you know, hey, this is the highest rated, uh, you know, debate in recorded history and the second largest watched event uh, in television history. So definitely a lot of people are interested in the 2020 election. Uh, and honestly, can you blame everybody? Uh, I honestly, it doesn't really surprise me that so many people would be interested in this election. And that brings me to my next point, you know, in a traditional campaign, uh, season. Both of these two candidates would be going to swing states, battleground states in the last 30 days of the election. Uh, so to see Donald Trump in a state like Minnesota, I really think that that's telling. I really think that that shows where Donald Trump is planning on putting his last 30 days. Uh, and I could see that in a state uh, you know, like Minnesota potentially going to Donald Trump. Now, he was just in Minnesota. Uh, tonight, and he basically said, you know, hey, if I lose in the state of Minnesota, he says, I will never come back again. So I believe that. I believe when Donald Trump says if he loses there, he's never going to come back. And honestly, I can you blame him? Uh, he's tried so hard to win Minnesota in 2016, barely lost, Min you know, Minnesota, I'll say that, by about two to three points. So, you know, it wasn't like Hillary Clinton, you know, necessarily, you know, stole stole the night with Minnesota. You know, it wasn't like a 15, 20 point lead or anything. So uh, definitely in grasp for Trump. Uh, but also, you know, just wrapping up the rest of the planes here for Donald Trump, you know, um, another law and order. Uh, segment as well. You know, Donald Trump was endorsed by the uh, state of Minnesota Police Department. Uh, so, you know, again, that just goes to show you that more endorsements for Donald Trump with law and order with background. So, you know, just putting that all into context for, you know, the sake of everything, uh, I can really start to see a clear path of the Midwest for Donald Trump through law enforcement uh, and through that rule farmer. Um, you know, thinking about the industrious workers, thinking about all of that, you know, Joe Biden as a union guy, uh, he's trying to secure that vote as well. However, what you're also missing is, you know, security. And who better fits that security bill than someone like Donald Trump? You know, especially last night with that debate. If you guys missed that debate, I'm linking it in the description as well so you guys get a chance to look at that because, you know, Joe Biden said, you know, he's not going to be doing the rest of the debate, uh, the last two debates. So as far as the other two scheduled debates, this may be the only debate that we actually get to see between the two of them. So if that is the case, I really think, you know, that's a shame. You know, if you really think about why Joe Biden would refuse to want to go on the same stage as Donald Trump. For me, 
I just have to think, if you're the President of the United States, it's your job to listen to other people. It's your job to hear your constituents. And if Joe Biden were to win the presidency, you know, he would also be Donald Trump's president. So he would, you know, I would hope want to hear what Donald Trump had to say. Uh, and last night it was just these little bitty memories of, you know, Joe Biden. And honestly, I couldn't stand it. Um, you know, and that's why it was just refreshing to see that debate, uh, you know, last night with Donald Trump, he really electrified that, um, and then bringing that into Duluth tonight, uh, you know, speaking again for the first time since the debate between either of the two. And like I said, if this was a traditional campaign, uh, in a typical campaign season, you know, before all of the Corona, uh, you know, you would be seeing, you know, the candidates going to places like Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh, and honestly, we're not seeing that. Now, I will say this as well for Joe Biden. I think I'm starting to figure out the strategy that he's uh, attempting to do here with the last 200 or so delegates that are uh, left up here for grabs, uh, and I believe that he's attempting to win with the South. Now, Kamala Harris attempting to secure that African-American vote uh, with Barack Obama campaigning heavy in places like North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, giving Lindsey Graham a real run for his money with Jamie Harrison. Uh, so I could really see, especially out of the rest of these southern states that we're seeing that are still toss-ups on the board, imagine, oh, you know, a place like Georgia, you know, South Carolina, North Carolina, all going to uh, you know, Joe Biden. Uh, but having Donald Trump win in the state of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee, uh, that is going to really, I think, take the sales out of the GOP there in the South. Depending on what can happen, I, I think with the Stacey Abrams, Roy Cooper, Jamie Harrison, uh, you know, regime that they have there, I think it's really going to be telling in the South there with that African-American turnout. Now, uh, as well, the same can be said with the way that Donald Trump is campaigning in the wood in the Midwest. Uh, I really feel like that's something that he understands, the riots, all of that in the South, uh, you know, securing that area for Joe Biden. I don't think that, you know, I don't think it should be uh, discredited at this time, especially if you think about Joe Biden could win in the state of Nevada as well in the state of Arizona and Colorado and New Mexico. Um, that would put Joe Biden at 266, and we haven't even finished off New England. Donald Trump, 200 electoral votes, even if he were to win in the state of Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, and in Pennsylvania, that would only put him at 264 electoral votes. New England is very uh, is, is very hotly contested this year. Uh, New Hampshire, Maine, Maine at large, that is all going to be uh, very, very hotly contested, especially around that Susan Collins, uh, you know, vote. Will Susan Collins be able to secure uh, Maine for the GOP? And I, <clears throat> you know, I would honestly think that that would be really hard for her to do, especially with the way, uh, you know, they were you know, talking about Justice Kavanaugh, the way that he was confirmed in New England, a lot of people sort of upset with Susan Collins there, uh, and also with the way that she voted on impeachment with, uh, you know, the Republicans. Uh, so she is very unfavored in Maine at this time, uh, still after all of that. Uh, so I could see, you know, especially the first in Maine going to Biden, uh, as well as Maine at large for Biden. Uh, but Donald Trump, I think he could still secure that rule area in Maine. Uh, now, so it's all going to basically come down to the state of New Hampshire. You know, if, uh, you know, Donald Trump can win in New Hampshire, he's won the presidency. But if, uh, you know, Joe Biden can win in New Hampshire, and it's not uncommon for a, you know, a Republican to win in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, you know, look at George W. Bush. Look at George Bush Sr. Look at Reagan. These are not, it's not uncommon. They have a Republican governor at this time. Uh, so, but 
honestly, with everything that's going on, with how polarized everything is getting, uh, New Hampshire could honestly go to uh, Joe Biden in a handed lead. Uh, you know, plus four, plus five points there. Uh, but I honestly think that at the end of the day, it could be very close. Uh, so that's what it could look like, even with Trump winning in the Midwest, flipping Minnesota, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, but losing North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, all of those states crucial to a GOP win. So honestly, you can win the state of Ohio and still lose the presidency by losing Arizona or losing Georgia. So there you guys go. I just wanted to show that to you guys tonight, uh, and I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode of the political discussion. Let me know down below what you guys thought about all of that, and also uh, make sure that you uh, take a chance to uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't had a chance to do so already, and I'll see you in the next one. Get some more.